If you're considering getting dairy sheep and you're wondering how many dairy sheep you can actually bring to your small property or backyard, then this video is for you. I'm gonna be talking about how many dairy sheep you can have per acre and what that all means. I'm Natalie Lucier from Waykeeper Farm and Nerdery and we have dairy sheep here as well as this greenhouse and all kinds of other animals on our farm. So I'll be talking to you about this from my personal experience as well as from the experience of way more experienced people like Woody Lane, who is uh, an amazing author who wrote this book called Capturing Sunlight, which I highly, highly recommend if you plan to graze animals. And this is also for cows and goats and other animals as well, other livestock, so not just for sheep, but I think it's extremely beneficial to read this before you bring animals to your property. So even though I'm gonna be giving you some great tips on how to figure out your sheep stocking rate and how many sheep you could probably have on your property, this book goes into way more details and I highly recommend it. So first off, I wanna talk about what type of setting your sheep will be in. So you can definitely have dairy sheep in an enclosed area where they're confined. So for example, like a barn or what I call just a, a dry area where they can just eat hay all the time and they're not grazing. And so if that's the setup that you have, maybe you're in a really small area, you don't have space to graze, then you don't have to worry so much about sheep stocking rate because in that case, what it really comes down to is how much hay you can bring into your property, you know, high quality, amazing hay for your sheep. And then also just making sure that you're able to keep the area clean enough and dry enough for all of the manure and everything that comes out of your sheep. So those would be kind of, you know, more of a confined scenario. But what we're talking about today is if you want to graze your sheep, which I think is really a great way to go. So that's why stocking rate really comes in when you want to do rotational grazing, because if you are just setting your sheep out on a big property, they're a lot likely to just eat everything, poop everywhere, and then have a lot more parasite issues and a lot less forage to choose from. So this is where rotationally grazing really comes in. So the quick rule of thumb is five sheep per acre if you have really good pasture and if you're able to intensively rotationally graze. So let's dive into what all of that means. There are a lot of different factors that go into this five sheep per acre number, and sometimes that might push your number higher if you have really amazing grass and pasture, or lower if you have really poor pasture or if your sheep are bigger. So here are the factors to really consider when you're calculating how many sheep you want to bring to your property. So the first one is the quality of your soil and the quality of the forage. If your soil is deficient in a lot of minerals and things, then your forage will also be poor quality. Now you also want to look at the variety of things growing in your pasture. You want a mix of grass, forbs, as well as flowers and all kinds of different things because all of these, including legumes, are really nutritious and they bring a more balanced meal to your sheep. And when I say legumes, I mean things like clovers or peas, which tend to be higher in nitrogen and protein. You also have to consider how large your sheep are. So if you're talking about fully grown adult sheep and you have a dairy breed like I do, where the male sheep can get up to 230 pounds or so, then that is a lot more forage that they're going to eat every day because they eat a percentage of their weight. And if you compare that to a young lamb that's, you know, barely 50 pounds, then that's a way different calculation. Another important consideration is how long your pasture is available for grazing. So in our climate here in Southern Ontario, Canada, we usually graze from May until November. So that means that there is fast growing grass, there's enough for them to eat, and it's a good time to forage out on the pasture pasture, but there is also a dormant period in the summer. So this takes us to how quickly your forage grows back. So if you're rotationally grazing, that means that your sheep are in a smaller enclosure and then you're moving that enclosure or that movable fence at, at a regular basis, usually every single day. And if the grass is not growing fast enough by the time you get back to that area, then that also affects how many sheep you can have and how much food you can provide them. So for us in July and August, things really do slow down a lot because if we don't have a lot of rain, then our grass is not growing actively. It just stands there dry and it's not as high nutrition for our sheep. 
Now, another important consideration for how much space you need for rotationally grazing sheep is that you don't want your sheep back on the same pasture right away because that increases the chance of them picking up more parasites. There are a lot of different parasitic worms that sheep carry and that they expel in their manure. And so if you have sheep staying in the same place for too long or coming back to the same place before the parasites have had a chance to hopefully die, then you're really going to have too much trouble with your sheep and the worm load that they'll carry. So what you want to do is ideally not have sheep on the same pasture more than 60 days uh, together, but most people observe a 30 day waiting period. So what that means is maybe they start in pasture A, you rotate a bunch of times, and then 30 days later, they can come back to pasture A. Ideally, you would stretch that out to 60, but I know a lot of people don't have the space to do that, and um, it's not necessarily as common. So all of this means that if you have really poor pasture, or if you have some of the issues I talked about where pasture isn't growing very well, then you'll wanna have a lot more space. And actually, you want a lot more space no matter what, because it means that you have a lot more flexibility in your grazing schedule. You have a lot more forage to offer. You can even stockpile forage. So that means that you let forage stand for the winter months where maybe there's something that you grew there and that you're just waiting until it gets cold and it freezes or snows, and then your sheep can go there and eat that. And we don't have a ton of experience yet with stockpiling forage, but that is again, something that they talk a lot about in this book. So I highly recommend it if you're curious about how to reduce the amount that you spend on incorporating hay or buying hay into your farm, that is definitely something to think about. So all of the factors I talked about are really important, but it's hard to know, you know, just looking at your grass or your pasture to see, you know, is it actually nutritious? Does it have a whole lot of volume or not? So I highly recommend that you do the exercise in this book where they walk you through cutting a certain amount of pasture and uh, bringing it inside, cooking it, and then seeing how much you get. And then from there, you get some calculations for how much forage you're actually putting out as well as how many animals you could have on pasture. When it comes to rotational grazing, you also want to think about how much your animals are able to eat in a time period and in a certain area. So in an ideal scenario, your sheep will be in a certain area, they'll eat everything down and not leave a bunch left over, and then you'll be able to move them on to the next spot. And the reason you want things to work out that way is that first of all, you're not wasting forage. And then also you're not gonna let them eat everything so badly that they destroy plants and that the plants don't grow back as well because that's also a really bad place to be in with your rotational management. So you don't want them to deplete the plants so they can't grow back. You just want them to eat the top parts so they get the most nutritional value, which is where all the, the nutrition tends to be. And then also you want them to be able to move on to the next day and not leave a bunch of stuff behind. Now, what we've learned is that during certain parts of the year, your sheep can't keep up with the amount of grass growing. So there's a lot of different things you can do. You can just mow certain areas so that they'll grow back right before they're ready to go on that pasture, for example, or there might be other ways to manage certain things. So you don't have to worry if your grass is growing too fast or your pasture is growing too fast and you can't keep up. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's good to have extra and it's good to have that extra growth that's coming in. So to give you a little bit of context on what we do here on our farm, so we have a 17 acre farm and we have our sheep and then we also have boarded horses. So they have some space as well in the pasture, not shared with the sheep. And then we also are going to be planting about five acres to a forest or more forested areas. So this is also something that we considered when we were planning how to do this from a permaculture perspective so that we would have space to graze sheep and horses as well as more of a canopy of trees. So that leaves us with about three and a half acres where we rotationally graze our sheep. And in the winter, we keep about seven adult sheep. And then in the spring, we have lambs. And then we have a lot more sheep throughout the spring, summer, and fall season until we either sell stock or we uh, butcher some lambs as well. Our personal goal is to keep fewer than 10 adult sheep throughout the winter because then we have to feed hay during those months. And speaking of hay, it's really good to have extra throughout the summer months because you might run into issues like I mentioned where the grass is not growing very fast because it's too dry. So it's good to be able to supplement with extra hay. And also you might just run into other issues where your sheep are too hot to be out in pasture. So we have these little houses that we built that we rotate with them. So they have some shade 
need, but it can just be really tough on sheep if it's really, really hot and humid where you are. So it's nice to have the option to keep them in the barn if it is too hot and to have hay to feed them too. So now that you know just about how many sheep you can have per acre on your farm or your property, I want you to watch my next video all about rotational grazing and how we do that right here.